I've had a lot of questions recently about how to add a sidebar to blog posts in Squarespace 7.1. In this video, I'll walk you through how to do that using my favorite plugin. So I'll put a link to the plugin below. So you'll purchase that and they'll send you instructions and files to add. And I'll walk you through that whole process today. But before we even get started with the plugin, let's go ahead and create our sidebar page. So in your not linked section, click the plus sign and let's just start with a blank page. I'm going to call this sidebar and by calling it sidebar and checking that this URL slug is sidebar, that means that I don't have to make any changes in the code later. So go ahead and call it sidebar, make sure that your URL slug is sidebar. And I also under the SEO settings, I hide this page from search results. And what that means is it won't show up on its own in search results as sidebar. I don't want it to do that. I just want it to show up as part of a blog post. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and edit the page and think about what we would like to add. So I'm going to add a blank section first. So I have total control over what's happening here. I usually like to start out with a search block. So let's add a search block um, and let's limit it to my blog. Apply that. If you wanted, you could also put an author intro here, a picture of yourself. Um, I also, I'm going to get rid of this empty text block. Uh, I like to put an archive block. And with the archive block, I'll choose my blog again. And then for display, I like to choose the drop down. And you can have it um, grouped by month or by category, whatever makes sense for your blog. So I'll go ahead and add that. And then next, I also like to um, put some featured articles here in the sidebar. So if somebody's reading an article, they can scroll down and see maybe a featured article in the sidebar. I usually use the carousel summary block to do that. So again, I'll select my blog. I, this um, sidebar is going to be pretty narrow, so I only want to show one item per row. There we go. And you can um, obviously change how this displays. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the date and I'm not going to show the excerpt. I just want the title. And then if I go back to layout, I don't think I want to use their featured text here. So I'll come back and just add my own. So I will say featured posts. Maybe heading three. There we go. So that looks nice. Again, the sidebar, you can do whatever you'd like in it. If you look at my website on my sidebar, I have um, a link to my lead magnet under the search bar and an ad for Squarespace. Uh, popular content, so that's just what we set up, uh, that summary block, archive. I also um, have an Instagram block on mine. So again, sky's the limit for what you can do on your sidebar. Once you have that ready, Go ahead and use the link below to purchase the plugin that will let you make this your sidebar. Once you've purchased that, you'll receive some files to download. One of them will be an HTML file called instructions. If you double click that, it will open it up in a browser and it will show you instructions. And you'll also have a couple of files we need to install. So if you follow the instructions, the first instruction is to install those files. And we'll do that here in not linked. So I'll click the plus button and I want to choose under more, I want to choose link because this is going to link to a file. So I'm going to call this a uh, sidebar plugin CSS. So you have a CSS file and a JavaScript file. And for the link, we click the cog icon, go to file, click upload file and in your folder that you receive, you'll see, Plugin sidebar JavaScript and plugin sidebar CSS. So right now let's go ahead and upload CSS. So it's uploaded, but I haven't selected it yet. So click it, you'll see a check mark to know that it's selected. Click save and then save again. And you'll see it here in our not linked section. So we're going to do the same thing for that JavaScript file. So again, link, and I'm just going to change this to JavaScript, JS for JavaScript. Click the cog icon file, upload file, JavaScript, check mark, save, and save. Those are now in place. 
The next step is to add some code to your website, and that's also in your instructions file. So here's what your instruction file kind of looks like. And it looks something like this. I have mosaicked out the important bits here, but what you'll do is you will click copy code and it will copy the code that's in this box. Now you are using sidebar as your sidebar page URL. So here again, that's this. So if this is something different, before you copy that code, go ahead and paste it in here and it will update the code here for you. So you just need to make sure that that URL matches. If you want to disable your sidebar on specific pages, for example, if we don't want it to show up in on our main blog page, but only on blog post page pages, you can do that as well. So I'll put a link below to a Chrome extension I use called Squarespace Collection Block Identifier that will let you get the collection ID for a page. So for example, if I go to my blog page here and click that extension, I have a collection ID. If I grab that and then paste it into this disable sidebar, the collection ID, paste it in there, it will update my code so that my sidebar will only appear on the posts themselves and not on that particular blog main page. So let's go ahead and grab that code, hit copy, and then what you'll do after you've copied it is go back to your home menu, go to settings, advanced, code injection, and you'll paste it here in the footer block. Once you've done that, click save. Okay, so I've pasted in the code in the footer section of my code injection, clicked save, and I included that information, uh, the collection ID for this main blog page, so that my sidebar only shows up on the post. So now if I click on a post, you'll see my sidebar. Here we go. So a couple of things here. My sidebar looks really tall in this section. It's too high up. So let's go ahead and go back to our page sidebar. And then we will add some spacer blocks up top just to move that down. I think about three spacer blocks is good. Some people like to do one spacer block and then drag it to make it taller, but I like to know exactly how tall it is. So I just stack spacers on top of one another. So let's go back and look at a post now. And that looks fantastic. So you can also make some other adjustments to your sidebar styling. If you scroll down your instructions or click customize, you can change things like hide it on mobile, yes or no. Um, it, the default is no. Make it sticky um, on mobile. The default is to position it below your content. You can also change the gap here. So I've made my gap 100 because I think that looks a little better. So I'll custom click to copy the style for the custom CSS and then I'll show you where I've pasted that in. So this gap is actually 100 pixels. So if we go back to design custom CSS, then you can paste in that code you just copied here and click save. And then any changes you've made to the styling will appear on your site. So I hope that all made installing your sidebar much easier. Again, you'll just need to set up a sidebar page load those two files in not linked, and then add code to your website. If you have any questions about how it works, reach out to the plugin company, Squarespace Themes. They do a great job of customer support. Again, you can click the affiliate link below to purchase the plugin. You can also look below in the notes, and I have a link with a coupon code to my mini course in, on image optimization. And if you're doing a blog, I highly recommend that you take that mini course that teaches you how to optimize images, both for file name and file size to improve your SEO rank and improve user experience. All right. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope this was helpful.